Imagine controlling a wheelchair with the slightest turn of your head or getting a text message from your refrigerator when you're running low on milk. Now think how great it would be to have the perfect cocktail mix for you with just the touch of a button. Although this may sound like stuff of science fiction or stuff of dreams in the case of the automatic bar, these are actually a few of the inventions created by McMaster engineering students as part of their final year projects. And to talk more about this is Mike Noseworthy, professor of electrical and computer engineering for Mac, and he's with us now. Good afternoon, Mike. How are you today? I am very well, Scott. How are you today? I'm doing very well. How have these projects changed over the years? And For example, what they're doing now to what they were doing 10 years ago or even 20 years ago? Um, well, I'm a bit younger than, uh, than knowing what 20 years ago would be, but I've certainly seen the uh, last 10 years, and there's certainly a lot more uh, very applied projects that have come out. And, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, advancements in computer technology and digital technology, uh, these projects are getting smaller and uh, they're getting more sophisticated uh, as these students are, uh, you know, have a lot more things at their fingertips and ability to access things via the Internet. They can bring in and put things together with, with great ease. Are students more aware of life after university now than they were perhaps a, a decade ago? In other words, when they're there, they're, they're very much focused on what's next? You know, I, I, I got to compare to uh, my own experience. And uh, when I was an undergraduate uh, back in the 80s, dating myself. Uh, we really kind of were, it was a mystery uh, as to what would happen next. But uh, the students these days are a lot more savvy as to what's coming up uh, next. And we're trying to, uh, trying to prep them for that uh, the best we can. So you find that they're, they know more about what they want to do, what direction they want to go before they actually graduate. Um, I think uh, I think they do at least based on uh, when we were when myself uh, as an example was younger. I think that the students have a lot more uh, knowledge about what are, what the art of the possible is and where they can actually go uh, after their uh, after their degree. Tell us about this final year uh, assignment and how this is different from perhaps what they would be doing during the the rest of the year, the course of the year, or years previous. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is a project that they've all been working on for the entire year, um, and uh, they're done in groups, and they, they make a big um, uh, pitch to uh, us faculty that says this is what they're planning on doing. We give them the wide open. Uh, we're in electrical and computer engineering, so the students actually decide the direction their project wants to go as a group. Uh, they pitch it as a, a proposal, and we give them feedback, and then they're, they're away, and they bounce ideas off us all year. And uh, there's no didactic component, no, you know, well, we have a few lectures just to teach them about engineering design and the real world, and uh, away they go, and they come up with fantastic ideas, and uh, this is where it's all kind of focused down to is today, and they're showing uh, what they've designed and built and how it all works. Does this start with a need first, or does it start with a science first? Uh, it, it really starts with a need. Uh, they, they, they're, they're now at the point in their last year, they've seen, you know, what sort of things are kind of needed out there or niche markets that they've maybe identified based on their previous courses, uh, their three years, or even through maybe some internships that they've, uh, that they potentially have done. They're, they're, they've discovered for themselves these little niches that uh, are potentially uh, small projects that may end up in small startup companies or maybe needs for, um, uh, for, uh, for the general population and device that they could actually put together. Is there more, do they feel there's more opportunity now to be more entrepreneurial simply because of oh, the internet and this sort of you, thing? You know what, the, the, they, you should see the excitement on their faces that they now know that, hey, you know, they're now at the point they're, they're almost engineers, just a couple more weeks to go. Uh, well, they are engineers, really. I mean, they've designed all this wonderful stuff, and uh, they now know that they're, this really says to them that they're ready. They're ready to get out there and, uh, and, uh, and be the real thing. How important is it to, for them to use what they've learned in a practical sense? Um, well, if you just sit there and learn lectures all day, um, you know you, you lose the you lose the big picture. But when you sit there and you actually design something, and you know, uh, with with designing and building comes the failures. And I think uh, learning failure is very important in anybody's education. And when you sit there and build something, it, it doesn't work, or you burn something out, or you know, you find out that the system you built is actually not going to be any use if you try it on a human. If you're doing a biomedical project, um, these are the things you got to learn along the way. And and these are failures that come with success. And I think by learning the, the, the feeling of failure, the success is going to be all that more sweet, and they're going to, they're going to get there. We were just talking recently with someone in regard to how, how the uh, complexion of universities and college campuses have changed over the last uh, decade or so, with a lot more and more women uh, becoming participants. Obviously, engineering is still one of those areas which is, is male-dominated, I'm guessing. Uh, how do women play a factor in all of this? 
Um, that's a good question. And as the years go by, uh, you see definitely more and more women involved in engineering, which is very, very good. There's some amazing uh, female uh, engineering students. And uh, uh, actually, in the biomedical engineering uh, component of electrical and computer engineering, uh, it's quite a split. It's uh, it's I don't exactly know the number, but it's very close to maybe 50%. There's a lot of women involved in biomedical engineering, and, and there's quite a few actually involved in the electrical side too. So you see lots of great ideas, and, um, and uh, you know, there, there's, there's some actually brilliant uh, women engineers out there. Much difference in the projects the two, put, the two genders put forward, or is it pretty much the same? Um, no, I think it's... Uh, I think it's uh, pretty balanced. I think that uh, uh, women and men uh, together, as they put projects together, I think uh, I think that it's there's no real big difference that I see from male-dominated project versus a female-dominated project. Um, no, it's it's they're all spectacular. How hard is it to get some of these ideas that they put forth out into private industry? Uh, do you see many of these projects actually making it to market? Um, with some uh, with some investment, I I think that there's some definite uh, projects that I've seen today that these these could definitely be something that could be marketed, and uh, and made into like small sp- uh, small startup companies. So a trip to the Dragon's Den after this, then? I think so. <laughs> Give us an idea of some of the projects that are coming up this year. Absolutely. Um, uh, some of the uh, the ones uh, there. There's quite a few uh, actually, but uh, just a few of them, like you mentioned in your introduction, a smart fridge that uh, you know tells you when there's expired, you know, the old lumpy milk in the yeah. fridge, um, or uh, maybe we'll send you a text that says uh, you know you're out of eggs or something. Uh, the now, how door- how would this work? Would this work on you feeding in the information of expiry dates, this sort of thing, or does it actually yeah, analyze yeah, you, the product? Oh no, it's no like it's not like a biochemical system. It, <laughs> uh, no, no, it's not that fancy. Like you'd have to definitely give it some of the uh, the information up up front um, it's yeah it's not a not a chem lab um, so uh, you give it stuff like that and it would send you text messages via your your, your smartphone um, there is uh, sleep apnea monitors now these are these have been developed before but uh, one group made a sleep apnea monitor for the cost of a bag of chips and a coffee which is um, very very amazing in terms of that kind of cost and you know how medical costs are so expensive these days and that's quite a quite unique um, there's an eye gate system that t- basically touch touchless computing so you can look at a monitor and just by tracking your eyes so people that are paraplegic for example or have other movement disorders can actually communicate via let's say a uh, let's say a, co- a computer system uh, a, a driving avoidance system um, I thought was kind of cool uh, you know I, I uh, I've I'm one. I've gone deer hunting with my car and hit one. You know, not that I tried, and <laughs> and uh, you know, no fun. And you know, it's something that uh, if that could be built into cars, um, that would be a, a very very handy thing as well. Um, wheelchairs that turn with uh, head motion, or one that was very good was uh, another wheelchair uh, group. Actually, three ladies uh, developed this idea where uh, one caregiver could have a whole bunch of wheelchairs in a line and uh, take them all out for uh, for some fresh air. And, you know, with the, uh, the aging population, so many more people are in wheelchairs, and we don't have enough people to look after a lot of these, um, you know, people that are uh, incapacitated. And to have something like one caregiver going out with a train of wheelchairs all following one another would be, it's it's that's a spectacular idea. Now, are, just, sorry, go ahead. That's just some of the few ideas, and I could I could fill your show all day. I mean, there's a, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> are these mere extensions of what you were doing when you were in school several years ago, or are these completely different ideas? These are all completely uh, new ideas. It's a, it's a, you know sometimes you think that you'd see recycled ideas, but mm-hmm. every year goes by and it's like wow, what a great idea! Um, you know that it's exciting for me because. Uh, uh, every, it's amazing that there's, you know, there's so many new and bright ideas out there, and it's it's very very fun to to be a part of. So, in other words, we're in good hands. We are in great hands. All right, Mike Noseworthy has been with us, professor of electrical and computer engineering.